amazing presence of Professor Alois Jungbauer. Uh, it's a, a very pleasure for us, Professor uh, Alois Jungbauer, to receive you in this webinar. And But before introducing what you're going to talk today, I would like to thank you on behalf of the Graduate Studies and Research Office of the Federal University of Sao Paulo. Uh, and I also would like to thank the host for today's webinar, which is Professor Igor Breslin and Professor Yara Breslin. It's an honor to have those two wonderful researchers in our group. And I would like to talk a little bit more about the, those two amazing uh, professionals and professors of the university. Professor Yara, she's a chemical engineer and she, she graduated from the Western Paraná State University. And also uh, she did a doctor and master program in chemical engineering from the State University of Campinas. And also a postdoctorate from the Faculty of Pharmaceutical Sciences at the University of Sao Paulo, under the supervision of the Professor Adalberta Pessoa Giorno Prados, uh, uh, mother, since 2000, uh, 2015. So, Professor Yara, uh, she has experienced uh, different fields of research, but the most important is the biomolecule, biomolecules recovery and purification process. She used to work with the enzyme bromelian uh, from plant sources such as pineapple and caroa, and also uh, with polyclonal and monoclonal antibodies. Uh, in the area of biotechnology process, she has worked with extraction, precipitation, and affinity, ion exchange, and hydrophobic interaction chromatographies. She's now currently uh, a, a professor at the UNIFESP, in the Department of Chemical Engineering. And also uh, from since 2020, she's also participated in the Parent and Science Project at, at the UNIFESP. So she's the ambassador uh, also this of this project. And also Professor Igor Breslin. Thank you so much, Professor Igor Breslin for organizing this wonderful webinar. Professor Igor is also graduated in Chemical Engineering at the State University of uh, Maringa. So he has a master and doctorate degrees in chemical engineering from the State University of Campinas in the area of the developmental and, uh, oh, sorry, development of biotechnology process. So he has a postdoctorate continuous purification process at the University of Natural Resources, Resources and Life Sciences in Vienna, Austria, with this amazing professor, uh, Alois Youngbauer. So he has experience in separation process, working in the research field of downstream processing of biomolecules, such as monoclonal and polyclonal antibodies and enzymes. Using absorption-based chromatography techniques like ion exchange and affinity. New materials such as membranes and polymeric composites have been studied and applied as alternative supports for immobilization affinity ligands. Now, he's a current associated professor in the, in the chemical engineering department at the UNIFESP. So thank you so much, Professor Igor. Thank you so much, Professor uh, Yara. And a huge thank for Professor Youngbauer for your presence. Professor Youngbauer is from the University of Natural Resources and Life Science in Austrian Century. Uh, Center of Industrial Biotechnology from Vienna, Austria. And Professor Uigo will, will give the, the introductions for the interaction of the public. And now Professor Uigo and Professor Yara, the floor is yours. And on behalf of the Graduate Studies and Research Office, thank you so much for letting the community of UNIFESP in outside from UNIFESP to join this amazing opportunity to be in touch with this Professor uh, Young Bauer. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Camilo. Now, ladies first, Professor Yara, please. Well, for us, it's a great pleasure to receive today in this UNIFESP International Webinar Series, Professor Alois 
Jungbauer from University of Natural Resources and Life Science, Boku, and the Austrian Center of Industrial Biotechnology, ACB, in the wonderful city of Vienna. Professor Jungbauer was the host of me and Professor Igor in our one year research stay in Boku the last year. Alois, thanks a lot uh, for your acceptance to our invitation. Ville danke. Now, okay. Professor Igor will present a brief CV of Professor Jungbauer. Uh, Professor Alois Jungbauer received his PhD in Food Technology and Biotechnology from Boku. He serves as a professor, being the head of the Institute of Bioprocess Science and Engineering at Boku. He was also honorary professor at Wenzhou University in China and visiting scientist at the Singapore Institute of Technology. He's currently working in bioengineering of proteins, plasmids, and viruses, and has developed several continuous processes for protein purification. Fundamentals of engineering in biological product recovery are the core activities of the working group led by Professor Jungbauer. This group is focused on isolation purification and characterization of proteins, plasmid, viruses, and cells. Currently, mass transfer and thermodynamic phenomena in bulk crystallization, chromatography, and chromatographic reactors are also being investigated. Research is also performed in the areas of stationary phase development and the generation of novel affinity ligands in affinity adsorption. Professor Ian Bauer authored more than 350 publications among papers, patents, and transfer of knowledge. He has almost 10,000 citations and an age factor of 51. Currently, he is the editor-in-chief of Biotechnology Journal and editor board member of Preparative Biochemistry and Biotechnology and also Journal of Chromatography A. Today, in this UNIFESP International Webinar Series, Professor Jungbauer will present a lecture entitled Virus and virus-like particles and extracellular vesicles purification. Uh, just to remember to everyone who wants to uh, ask some questions, you can perform it by the chat, uh, either in Portuguese or English. If you prefer, you can uh, ask in, in Portuguese, then we will translate to Professor Jungbauer. So, Alois is with you. So thank you, thank you for the very warm welcome yeah, to this webinar. Yeah, uh, uh, honestly, I would prefer a face-to-face -face meeting. Yeah, uh, but um, it, it's now in these pandemic times. Uh, it's the best what we can do out of uh, this situation. Yeah. Uh, also, thank you those of you who uh, arrived a, a good morning or a good afternoon yeah, in the uh, uh, excellent uh, uh, questions uh, uh, column. Yeah? Before I start, yeah, uh, uh, maybe a couple of you already know me. I, I actually want to uh, uh, introduce uh, uh, myself. Yeah? So, uh, uh, Yara and Igor, it was really a pleasure having you in Vienna. And when you invited me, for me, it was clear uh, that I want to share uh, the experience, uh, uh, what we have in this field. 
The problem is uh, when you make such a, a, a seminar, you have to make kind of a, a, a hybrid uh, between uh, uh, the uh, actually uh, a hybrid between a, a, a lecture for students, but uh, not to bore the advanced like postdocs or, or the scientists. Yeah? So maybe at the very beginning, uh, the advanced one will be a little bit bored, but it will be challenging for the students. Yeah? Uh, uh, at, the, at the last, uh, not challenging, it will be informative for the students, but the, the, the second part of my presentation presentation will be more challenging for like master students or so because I really report from our actual uh, uh, research. So now I want to actually present uh, first where I'm from and uh, actually where uh, Yara and Igor disappeared for a year. Yeah, so last year. So this is uh, uh, Austria, uh, this is uh, Europe, Austria and Vienna in, in the middle of uh, uh, Central Europe. And actually, uh, this is where I am from. This is in the countryside where I am born, hilly. Uh, you see also a lot of rain uh, similar to Brazil because uh, uh, everything is green. Yeah, We have rarely such a day in can you hear me? Everything fine? Yeah? Perfect, we can hear. Yes, Professor, yeah. it's perfectly good. Uh, yeah. Good, good. Uh, and you see, this is actually the countryside uh, uh, where I'm born in the Alps. Yeah? And this is Austria, known with a lot of snow and mountains. Yeah. But actually, what a lot of people do not think about Austria, at the eastern part of Austria, we have even oil fields. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's uh, uh, because we're actually the Alp Alpine uh, mountains uh, uh, and uh, uh, plains uh, towards Hungary start, and there we have uh, also oil fields. Okay, currently, I live in Vienna, and uh, some of you may already have been in Vienna or visited Vienna, which is a very historic town with a lot of uh, uh, nice buildings, mainly built in the uh, late 19th uh, century or, or earlier. So just to get a, a little bit of view, this is what is called the Hofburg, this is what the former palace, this is our parliament. Uh, uh, again, part of the Hofburg, the Opera House, uh, and, and so on. So it's a lot. So we have also a lot of museums, yeah. And I guess uh, uh, Igor and Yara, do you remember when we actually visited the Dürer Museum where they have the hair, yeah? Uh, so that says a lot of uh, interesting uh, uh, collections in, in Vienna. Um, also, a lot of the modern art and Art Nouveau, and uh, actually, what's quite unique for for uh, a tourist in in Vienna is that um, you you would also visit the cemetery. Usually, if you visit the town, you don't go to the cemetery. But what you see here. Uh, this is the tomb of uh, Boltzmann, and you see the entropy is the Boltzmann constants uh, times the logarithm of the probability. So that's uh, here we have Mozart, Beethoven, Brahms, Schumann, uh, uh, and so on. A lot uh, here is Schubert, and so so that's and. Uh, 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 this is actually the Freud Museum, and this is where actually the psychoanalyst uh, Freud, Dr. Freud, actually his couch examined uh, uh, his uh, patients. Yeah. So this is the, the university. Uh, I'm located at the Department of Biotechnology. So we have a couple of locations in our university. This is our campus. And we have a couple of uh, departments which are really interrelated. Applied genetics, biotechnology, chemistry, 
food science and technology, nanobiotechnology, and then the Institute of Animal uh, Nutrition Products and Nutrition Physiology. Yeah. So we have a master PhD program, bachelor, master's PhD program in food and biotechnology, food science and technology, biotechnology, safety in the food chain, and also two interesting PhD programs. One is biomolecular technology of proteins, and the other one is bioprocess engineering. So this is bioprocess engineering. I have recently uh, uh, established this uh, PhD program. And currently, I am the head of the Institute of Bioprocess Science and Engineering. And we have also a pretty modern uh, a pilot plant where we can do really a process uh, development. And when we model processes, also can uh, uh, experimental confirm uh, our modeling. So, but now I really want to go to the, 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 the real uh, uh, science, yeah? And let me double check uh, here. I have to close the presentation and then to, to, to share. Uh, let me see, to share again. Nicht mehr teilen. Sorry. No. I, I, sorry, maybe that was... Uh, how do uh, I have closed the presentation and now I can share the other presentation? Can you can you see on the on your inferior corner on your right? Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see. Yeah. yeah so just uh, push the button. You. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. So now, so actually now it it should work again. Sorry for the yeah. That's perfect. Uh, it, it, it's presenting. Thank you. It's presenting. Great. So it, it's a pretty wide topic, the virus and virus-like particles and extracellular vesicles purification. These are interrelated. So uh, it's a really wide topic. Uh, I will try to give you an overview at the beginning and later on uh, some of uh, our uh, uh, actually research. Yeah. So an overview about virus and gene therapy and then vi virus-like particles, exosomes, extracellular particles, and a, a, an overview about the analytical methods, and then do examples by the polymer grafted media and by core shell and affinity chromatography media to separate uh, actually these molecular entities. So I think um, there is uh, definitely a difference between the manufacturing of viral vaccines and viral vectors. So viral vectors, this would be for gene therapy. So that we actually modify a, a, a virus yeah, in a way that we can introduce a gene into our body. Uh, I think this is quite interesting because uh, we will use the natural tropism of uh, a virus. So you, you all you know that the viruses actually uh, do not actually systemically infect uh, 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 a body or, or so. Uh, if you have influenza, you would infect the, 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 the lung. If you have other viruses like uh, the hepatitis B, you might infect the liver and so on. So using the virus uh, innate actually tropism or affinity to certain uh, uh, organs or tissues, yeah? we can direct then a recombinant virus to a, uh, uh, to, uh, a direct a gene uh, to, a, to a certain actually organ. The, the vaccines is actually in the viral vaccines, we want to target actually our uh, vaccine to, uh, um, to the immune system, yeah, uh, to, the, uh, uh, to the lymphocytes, uh, all the best. So the viral gene therapy is actually reality, yeah, is reality. So what you see here, this is the latest stage of uh, really 
approved uh, 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 gene therapies by FDA, EMEA, or the Chinese FDA. Uh, Gentizine and Ocronine, uh, these two ones are only approved in Asia or in China. The rest are in, uh, approved in US and in Europe. And so what you see, uh, they use either recombinant adenovirus, recombinant associated adeno-associate virus, herpes virus, or an oncolytic adenovirus uh, for the transfer of the gene. And here, you can see my mouse or not. And here, uh, we have the indication, usually cancer and yes, some... Yes, we see. You see the mouse, yeah, great. Uh, and you have some actually diseases which uh, actually lack uh, uh, a gene, yeah? So that's, uh, so there is a, a lot more actually uh, uh, in the pipeline I will show you in the moment. So these are, but vaccines are something different, yeah? So you we have like the live attenuated vaccines, measles, mumps, rubella, rota, smallpox, chicken, yellow fever. Oh, this is actually live and at attenuated viruses. Then we have inactivated viruses, hepatitis A, flu, polio, rabies. And then what we have subunit or recombinant and polysaccharide or so. And here came come in place the hepatitis, uh, uh, the papilloma virus, the hepatitis B virus, and then toxoid. This is more derived from uh, a bacteria. So that you see, we have a certain commonality, but also a difference. So here, this here, this is the, the common human viruses. So, and you see from the shape, and actually the, the size is pretty different from Ebola virus to the parvovirus. It's very, very small virus or the hepatitis A or the SARS virus or the, A, the HIV-1, the measles virus, influenza virus. So, uh, but what you see, the majority of the virus yeah, are, uh, are, in, uh, are enveloped virus. So they have an uh, enveloped a lipid uh, bilayer, and this lipid bilayer actually is from the host cell. Yeah, so that's the, and that we will come later uh, to this problem because uh, then a lot of other particles which are shedded have a similar uh, surface. So uh, I think a lot of you may know. Um, the uh, virus-like particles, yeah? the papilloma virus-like particles or the hepatitis B virus-like particles. These have been quite uh, 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 successful, uh, uh, actually, vaccines. Yeah? But we also have uh, virus-like particles from enveloped viruses. Let me come back a little bit to the gene therapy, and then you see the majority is going on in the US because uh, the pharma, honestly, pharma companies can get out the most revenue uh, of the US, uh, uh, actually, healthcare market than Europe, Asia. Yeah? And here you see the indications. A lot is cancer, monogenic diseases, infectious diseases, and so on. But Cancer therapy actually is the majority. And then you see there is an increasing number of clinical trials uh, uh, going on, and this is still uh, growing and is kind of a really exploding uh, business. And then here you see just uh, what is actually transferred, which type of uh, 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 gene are transferred to the to the, to the body. So, what I already mentioned, the popular viruses for the gene therapy is the adenovirus, the adeno associated virus, alpha virus, herpes virus, some lentivirus, and then even uh, vaccinia virus. Yeah, so that's, uh, uh, and you see, uh, uh, that's uh, uh, a completely different viruses, like these are non-enveloped, 
and the others are enveloped virus. Yeah? Then they could be negative or positive stranded. Yeah? And here you see uh, the size of the virus. The adeno-associated virus is rather small, is almost in the range of uh, uh, a large protein, whereas, let's see, the uh, 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 herpes virus, lentivirus are much uh, 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 bigger. Yeah. So uh, when we, I think, I, I, in interest of time, I don't go into the production, but uh, if we do the downstream processing of virus and virus-like particles, yeah, we have the production, the clarification, uh, the centrifugation, ultrafiltration, membrane absorbers, monoliths, and so on. Yeah. Uh, we could have again ultracentrifugation or chromatography, and then again at the very end, ultrafiltration, diafiltration, or also some chromatography. In some cases, we have uh, a sterile filtration, but in other cases, sterile filtration would not work when the virus, what we have seen, is, uh, is too big. Then we have to actually carry out the entire production chain under aseptic sterile conditions. So this is possible, this is doable, but uh, is also very costly. So here are some challenges for the viral gene therapy. So the adenovirus, yeah. So we have uh, a low diffusion rates, yeah. So the, 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 then uh, uh, we have uh, uh, we have to reduce the particle aggregation, reduce the DNA contamination, and the empty capsid uh, uh, separation. If we have enveloped viruses, what I have shown you before, we have low diffusion rates. They are shear sensitive, usually a very low data, and they are very temperature sensitive. Yeah and they are sensitive to acidic and basic conditions. So what you see below pH 5.5 and pH 8, yeah, actually, uh, and above 8, they would be destroyed. Yeah, uh, uh, and the high salt concentration could also compromise stability. Yeah? Yeah? So the reason is when we do like a biopharmaceutical purification, we do a virus inactivation yeah, for antibodies at low pH, yeah? because these enveloped viruses are very sensitive to pH. And this would actually limit then our uh, uh, actually conditions to purify a virus. So, uh, and what is the real challenge is? We have to have a high dose. So 10 to the 11, to 10 to the 14 particles per dose. So this is enormous compared to a vaccine. So in a vaccine, we have the maximum is 10 to the 8, maybe sometimes 10 to the 9 particles per dose. Yeah, that's, that's, that's really the maximum uh, in a vaccine. So you see, this is a factor of, of several orders of magnitudes higher. And so, uh, the, the scale for gene therapy uh, is not a small scale. At the moment, it's a small scale because uh, what I have shown before, uh, we all these dystrophies or so, we target a small patient pop uh, 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 population. Yeah, but once uh, we we target like cancer or so, the, the patient population uh, may become very high. And this is then a, a real uh, uh, challenge. So here you saw the, I show you the adeno associate virus. Yeah? Uh, usually we add uh, 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 three genes into the virus, and actually the, the virus is actually uh, the vehicle which transports the gene to the uh, target organ. Uh, uh, quite often, it's the liver. Yeah, so that's a, a lot of work is done actually in the field of uh, blood coagulation factors, factor eight, factor nine. A lot of clinical trials are uh, underway in phase three, but uh, uh, so far uh, nothing has been uh, uh, approved. Yeah, 
uh, these viruses are actually can be nicely produced in human embryonic kidney cells, the hex cells. Yeah. Uh, and then what you see here, maybe if you have a closer look, we have empty and full particles. But actually, we only want to have the full particles and not the empty ones. And uh, because the empty ones actually would uh, uh, actually uh, 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 block the receptors to be taken uh, uh, of the cells to be taken up. Yeah. So then they what is called the transformation efficiency goes down. So the industrial AIV purification process is the bioreactor, cell harvest, cell lysis, verification, ultra centrifugation, ultra tire filtration, then several chromatography steps, and then ultra tire filtration. Again, what you see, uh, a, a quite a, a complex process. And here you see such a, a centrifuge yeah, in in, uh, in uh, industrial scale, uh, which works at 120,000 G-forces with 40,000 RPM. And such a rotor capacity goes up to, to, to 40 liters. This one has 60 liters. There are centrifuges around which have a throughput of about 500 liter uh, uh, per hour. Yeah. So, so that's just to get an idea about the challenges of uh, the gene therapy. So that that's a, a, a non-enveloped uh, or what is called naked virus. Yeah. But we are we all ourselves uh, also uh, focus a lot on enveloped viruses and enveloped virus-like particles. So these are nanoparticles, and you see here the electron micrograph. They consist of the viral protein, do not contain the genomic material. Yeah, so this inside is empty. Outside is actually the, 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 the same um, surface uh, as like the, the host cell. The important is, is no safety issue, not infectious, and they do not replicate. Here we see such HIV, uh, human immunodeficiency virus, virus-like particles. They could be vaccine candidates, but they are candidates also for gene therapy, because later on uh, you can actually add uh, a, 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 a gene or a DNA or an RNA to the virus-like particle. Yeah. So. How do we form such uh, enveloped VLBs? Yeah? So uh, uh, the, the non-enveloped VLBs, actually you overexpress uh, some of these proteins, yeah, like for the papioma virus. And in a self-assembly process, yeah, the virus-like particle is formed. Yeah? So you, you can do two layers or three layers. Yeah? So you can make a, a very complex virus-like particles. So there is a lot of room for innovation, intuition, and, uh, 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 and, and also ideas. Yeah? So, that, that's, so you just overexpress these proteins and the particle itself uh, forms in a self-assembly process in the cell. The same is when you actually overexpress, the, for instance, the HIV gag or an other membrane targeting protein, yeah? then what happens is this, this uh, membrane targeting protein actually accumulates at the inner part of the surface of the cell, yeah? so at the cell membrane, yeah? and then a virus like particle is studied. Yeah? So what you can do again, you can do a single protein, you can do two proteins, you can do three proteins. So you could even do very sophisticated ones so that the virus-like particles is tracked to the immune system, for instance, to the T-cells, and also uh, carries uh, uh, the antigen. Yeah? So there's a lot of uh, actually potential around but uh, except the single layer virus-like particles have not yet been really uh, uh, exploited. 
The problem is actually when you overexpress such uh, uh, particles, then also um, uh, the, the, the cell also uh, uh, buds microvesicles and exosomes. So the exosomes itself could be either an impurity or the exosomes can be also a therapeutic agents. So when we uh, actually uh, um, produce virus like particles, we don't want to have the exosomes or we are not sure if we want to have the exosomes or not. Yeah. Uh, so here you see uh, some how these exosomes are, are, are composed of. It is also similar uh, to a virus like uh, a, a particle. So our options for, for, for envelope uh, particles could be the Cho cells, typical Chinese hamster or variant cells, the hex cells, the insect cells. Uh, so we explore uh, all, all, all three, three of them. Yeah? So we have done quite a lot yeah, with the insect cells yeah, uh, that we uh, uh, co-express uh, baculovirus yeah, in the insect cells. Yeah, and then form actually uh, a virus-like particles. Yeah? Uh, and here in this case, this would be uh, what you see, the spike here, the influenza virus-like uh, uh, particles. Yeah? So this is the hemagglutinin, and here is the gut. Yeah? So you see here, when we use this system, uh, this is a high-resolution electron micrographs this is an uh, this here what you see is a uh, uh, insect cell and how many of these particles are embodied from the insect cell when you have a closer look yeah, we not only see the virus like particles in this high resolution electron microscopy here you see the bar this is one micrometer yeah um, uh, we also see baculovirus, but we see also other virus, uh, also extra cellular vesicles. So what you already see at once is they have all the similar size, but they have different biological properties. And this is really the challenge in purification of these virus-like particles. And also is a challenge really to understand the biological system, because we are not sure that uh, uh, we cannot exclude that, for instance, the exosomes also trigger the immune system. And in addition, and I will uh, show you, we have the chromatin, because uh, we never have 100% cell viability. The cells actually will die, and they actually will release chromatin, and here you see the, uh, the pearl chain here, and this is a typical uh, actually sign uh, 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 appearance of chromatin in the electron microscope. Yeah? So you see this, uh, and, and, and then um, actually this is the same size as uh, uh, our virus-like uh, particles. When we do some counting of particles, uh, actually, we also count uh, the, so you see again, I, I think it goes too far. So, uh, so we have here our HIV CAC virus like particles, we have the micro vesicles, we have the exosomes, and they are, you see, simi similar in size. Then the 150 nanometers, exosomes 30 to 100 nanometers, micro vesicles 100 to 350 in, in, in nanometers. So very similar in size, similar density. Uh, the virus like particles has a density of about 1.2 gram per cubic, and the extracellular vesicles here in the range. Yeah? So there could be a possibility to separate them or not. Then we have uh, disassembled, deformed subunit extracellulars. And this is actually our starting material. And you see here the starting material. And in this electron micrograph, you already see also the, 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 this, this pearl uh, 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 strings, yeah, uh, the extra, the, the, the chromatin. 
And then again, another uh, picture of the extracellular vesicles and uh, uh, the virus-like particles here. Very nice a virus-like particle. And here, the extracellular vesicle, the uh, baculovirus. Uh, so that's, uh, you see, this is a, a, a nasty mixture. So what we can do is we can do the alter centrifugation, chromatography, membrane adsorbers, monoliths, conventional back bed, bind the loot or flow through, receptive extress material, precipitation, aqueous two phase, and hybrid processes. I don't want to go in precipitation and aqueous two phase. We have not done a lot of work in this field. I have mainly in ultra centrifugation and chromatography. Here, ultra centrifugation works. Yeah, so what you see here is uh, uh, that's the density uh, 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 here. When you see this is the density gradient. And then when you fractionate, and then you can really nicely, when you see these fraction numbers, this is the GAG molecule. So this is actually the protein which forms the extracellular vesicle. And then this, here is the, the Western blot. Uh, here is the, uh, the SDS electrophoresis. Here is the Western blot. And you see nicely that we could really separate actually from the culture supernatant uh, uh, the virus-like particle. So when I now go into the downstream processing, we could do, and we, we, we did quite a lot, uh, we did the, the, the pre-processing with core beads or what is the uh, restricted excess material, beads, affinity chromatography, membranes, and monoliths. Yeah? Uh, what I mentioned before, the analytics is very, very challenging because there is not a single method you can you, you use. We need transmission electron microscopy, uh, centrifugation. We can use density gradient. We do cryo M, uh, dynamic light scattering. Uh, we do uh, uh, electrophoresis. And then we also do some mass spectrometry, ELISA, and some antibody binding. And for the separation, we use actually the conventional porous beads, the core shell, the monoliths, the, and the membrane adsorbers. So uh, uh, we have published recently this year, I think, yes, this year, a capture and purification of human immunodeficiency, one virus like particles, and we compared convective versus porous media. It's open access published, so you can really. Uh, I look into, I don't want to go into every bit and detail, so the students or those who are interested. And also, um, the separation of virus-like particles and extracellular vesicles by flow-through and heparin affinity chromatography, also published uh, by the end of uh, uh, last year. So we have our own insect cell line developed together with the Boyce Thompson Institute to overexpress uh, these uh, things. Yeah, uh, we have characterized this. We have the transcriptome and the genome data. And here you see already. I've showed you a couple of these uh, uh, slides. And then uh, what we do is we go from the small scale to the large scale bioreactor, and we have shown that we can do the what is called the micro scale bioreactor and the laboratory scale bioreactor bio gives us almost the same uh, uh, um, uh, actual result. That when we started to do the purification, we, we thought is it possible to use conventional polymer grafted uh, media for purification of virus like particles and viruses. And then we see here, this is the adsorption isotherm, and we can bind uh, about one to the 10 to the 12, or five times 10 to the 12 or so, uh, a particles per millimeter. So we were not sure is this possible or not. But then exactly we thought seeing is believing. Yeah, so because everybody thinks that this. Typical conventional chromatography material is not suited for virus and virus-like particle separation. So here you see the empty bead. Yeah, this is the empty bead. 
explain when we actually absorb PSA, you see in this transmission electron microscopy that the bead gets dark. Yeah, and here this is uh, 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 this uh, actually when we zoom it out a little bit. Yeah. So that means also because this dark stain means that the protein binds throughout the, the particle. Yeah? But then actually when we absorb the VLP, for instance, we see that only the outer surface is stained. Here you see typically the outer surface. So, so but actually we get a much higher binding capacity, yeah, a much higher binding capacity uh, on this uh, spherical bead because the beads are not completely spherical. They are kind of corrugated. That means the surface, the, the real surface is much higher compared to the surface what we calculate uh, through a, uh, let's say, spherical sphere. And maybe you can see it on the computer. Uh, we have developed actually a, a methodology to uh, uh, actually incorporate uh, a fluorescent stain uh, to the virus like particles. And here you see such a fractal gel bead. And you see uh, this outer halo actually here, or this outer ring where we definitely see that the virus like particle itself has bound on the surface uh, of the chromatography material. So here you see what we have done, culture process, clarification, treatment, filtration, anion exchange chromatography. Yeah, and then here you see the assays, what we have done, nanoparticle tracking, HPLC, transmission electron microscopy, and then also some virus quantification to see that we remove the uh, bacula virus. And this is how it works. So you load and then you elude. Yeah, so purification. So this is the cell culture across, uh, 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 then the particle, and then the anion exchange chromatography. And what you see here, this gray zone, this is uh, the, the static uh, uh, light scattering. At that time, we did this uh, offline, we, we did. So you see the start, uh, static light scattering. And uh, uh, with the static light scattering, then this is an indication that uh, particles are actually separated. Because in the flow through here, you don't see any um, uh, starting uh, static light, light scattering signal, yeah? Because the signal, um, uh, because no particles actually pass through, everything is bound to the chromatography bead, yeah? And then we can actually separate in a, in a couple of uh, different actually fractions, yeah? So what you see here, this is the protein and the DNA uh, pass through. And then when we focus on these fractions, E2, E3, for instance, here we have the P24, and then we have the VP39. The VP39 is a protein from uh, actually the Bacula virus. Uh, the H1 uh, uh, is uh, the protein from the influenza, and the GP, uh, uh uh, uh, 64 is actually uh, from uh, um, uh, uh, our actually membrane forming uh, protein. And so what you see here that we definitely are able to separate the bacula virus from the rest uh, uh, of these things. Yeah? Then we do the particle quantification. So we have low particles in the flow through, and then we have a lot of particles in the in, in, in the main particle fraction. So what you further do is then you do an HPLC with miles or UV detection. So to discriminate actually the size and shape of the different particles. Yeah. And what we see here in E2, we have virus like particles. In, in E3, we have, for instance, other particles, including exosomes. So and here I show you in interest of time, I think I'm almost done. 
uh, when we do a purification of particles by core shell, core shell means uh, one is like the cup to core. We have an outer shell with a small pore uh, and then uh, a porous core which binds the impurities. So all the particles go through. Yeah, uh, 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 the the the, uh, the impurities are bound. Yeah, uh, and actually you collect the virus-like particles and everything in in the in the flow through. So actually DNA and so on after a benzonase treatment, the DNA everything uh, is reduced and goes through the particles. So what you see here. The load, the flow through. So in the flow through, you have the purified uh, 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 material, and then we went on and separated the, the virus-like particles yeah, on uh, a heparin surface, because it's quite interesting. For a lot, let's say about seventy to eighty percent of all viruses, yeah, the first entry point into the cell is the binding to the heparin sulfate. Yeah? So on the cell surface, you have heparin sulfate. So heparin sulfate is considered as a viral receptor. Yeah? So, and this heparin actually mimics the surface of a cell. And so what we have here that uh, in the flow through, we have again the virus like particles, and in the illusion, we have the extracellular vesicles. And then you can further go on and actually measure the particle size distribution. And so, what we further did is some proteome analysis yeah, so that you see uh, in the flow through and in the purification, we have some common proteins, yeah, but we have then also a lot of other. Uh, 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 protein. So 74 percent of unique proteins interact with the HIV GAC or with the HIV GAC virus and virus like particles. Yeah? So that's uh, it's quite interesting. So that we really see we have two different populations of, of these particles in, in, in our. Yeah? And then again, you could see the uh, 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 envelope, the, 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 the uh, 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 Exosomes or extracellular vesicles and the virus like particles. Then we have the extracellular vesicles and the virus like particles. So, in the interest of time, I will conclude. So, is the requirements for viral vaccines and viral gene therapy is different. So, I showed you. Yeah. So, uh, the, the viral, the, the gene therapy is more challenging. Of course, uh, I did not go into this detail. For the gene therapy, uh, the revenue is much higher than for a viral vaccine. Yes, yeah? so a viral vaccine has to be cheap. Yeah? In AIV, for instance, as an example, the separation, the, the challenge is the separation of empty and full particles. For the enveloped virus like particles, the, the challenge is the separation of extracellular vesicles, chromatin, and this from the virus -like, uh, like particles. And so we have several options for the purification of enveloped virus-like particles or viruses, enveloped viruses. This would be the core shell particles. There would be the conventional chromatography. And I did not go into the membrane adsorbers uh, uh, and the monoliths. Yeah? Uh, I think this is a very wide uh, 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 field. Uh, and it's really difficult, actually, to explain this in, in a, such a short time. But before I, I acknowledge my co-workers, uh, I will actually say that I have uh, two open positions for doctoral thesis uh, in my lab, in situ removal of products by self-stainting nanomembranes. Yeah? And the other one uh, uh, is a PhD thesis uh, on the separation uh, of uh, uh, proteins uh, by wet late uh, nanom nanomembranes. So I want to acknowledge especially Patricia Agula, Katrin Reiter, Petra Steppert, 
both all three are postdocs yeah, who had done really uh, 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 superb work yeah, that we arrived where we are now. Uh, this over is my uh, group in Vienna. And I want to acknowledge uh, actually uh, the, our PhD program, uh, a couple of companies, uh, uh, the Boyce Thompson Institute and Georgia Carter from uh, the, the University uh, of Virginia. And according to the time schedule, I think uh, we we still have a uh, uh, time uh, for for a couple of questions or or comments. Yeah. Yes, perfect. Thanks a lot for your marvelous uh, lecture. Always, uh, we have several questions uh, arriving here in in the chat. Uh, but but the first one uh, will be mine. Okay, uh, good. Are there any coronavirus VLP being developed or purified by your working group and at Boku? Well, we have, I, I, I think this would be early. We, we made the same concept. I like the influenza virus, like particle. We made the. Um, SARS-CoV-2 virus-like particle with this spike protein. So we have it. We have it in, in inside. Yeah, we have it in house. Yeah, uh, uh, and we we do currently the testing with the uh, uh, actually uh, Mount Sinai Hospital in in New York. Yeah, but it was was too early to 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 show you. The, the the coronavirus like particles yeah so the, the, the things yeah but this is what what is with we consider this like as a platform process yeah instead of the influenza hemagglutinin you could do any other surface protein yeah but the the trick is to position how can you position this uh, protein on the surface yeah? And maybe some of these virus-like particles will make it to a, a, a COVID-19 vaccine. It's, 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 it might, might be possible. Yeah. Excellent. O other question from Natalie Del Valle. Uh, amazing uh, topic. Uh, I'd uh, like to know uh, which is the main challenge for industries to introduce continuous VLP process. The, a continuous will be process that will be uh, uh, I think uh, continuous will be process that will be the difficulties is the upstream processing not the downstream processing yeah because uh, it has been shown when you continuously produce virus that the virus uh, uh, actually uh, uh, mutates or so over time, yeah, uh, and then uh, uh, you lose productivity. For the downstream processing, I think you would apply the same principle like uh, what you do for continuous antibody purification. The counter current loading, yeah, uh, you, you could do uh, parallel chromatography, uh, maybe even precipitation, all these type of things which offer uh, uh, continuous, yeah? But the upstream, yeah, the bioreactor is the problem, yeah? I don't see the questions anymore. Before I saw the questions. It's fine. Uh, I, I, I will uh, yeah. uh, present then. The, we have another one uh, from uh, Professor Eliezer Ladea Gomes. Uh, how to do a controlled delivery of vaccine substances using uh, this presented method? How to measure the vaccine diffusion of these substances? Chromatography could be used. What, what, what do you mean uh, uh, to control? Uh, uh, um, what, what is meant with diffusion? This is what I do not understand with the question. How to measure? Uh, 
Eliezer, if you you can uh, explain, put in the the chat, then I will uh, do the question again. Yes, Igor, you can do the next question and after return to Professor Eliezer question. Yes, but we have other questions from Professor uh, Eliezer. If uh, molecular sieves uh, have been tested for vaccine delivery, is it possible? Uh, that means that, that molecular sieves are all about means for the vaccine delivery or for the vaccine purification. This is actually what confuses me a little bit in this question. For the vaccine delivery. For the vaccine delivery, so that uh, the, the vaccine has been incorporated in a in a matrix and then delivered through a molecular sieve. Yeah. Is is this meant? Yes. Um, the the other one, the question uh, from João, is uh, given the advantages of VLP for vaccines uh, against some diseases, yeah. do you think it is possible for the pharma industry to migrate to continuous uh, VLP vaccine production? What are uh, the challenges uh, regarding the pharma industry? Yeah, what I mentioned, the continuous production uh, uh, actually is, uh, you, you have to think about um, uh, currently uh, the, the, the Bacolo system, Bacolo virus system, yeah, is working uh, that you have the Bacolo virus carrying the gene, then you infect the insect cells, yeah, then you infect the insect cells, and then the, the, the virus-like particle is body to a form, yeah? So, or what you do, uh, others do, like when you do the hex cells, you transfect the hex cells with the plasmid DNA, for instance, yeah? And then, actually, so you, you don't have a constitutive uh, expression and this is really because you would have to, to, to actually continuously cultivate the cells and then continuously infect the cells. So this is different to a continuous manufacturing of antibody, for instance, where you have uh, a, a construct uh, with like the Cho cells, where the antibody is actually integrated, and the gene is integrated in the genome, for instance, uh, the genome of interest, and then produces uh, actually constitutively the antibody. Yeah? I don't know, is this clear or not? So that's uh, actually the formation of, uh, of the virus or virus-like particles is more complex than actually the recombinant protein expression. Yeah. Perfect. We have other questions from Professor uh, Eliezer. Uh, how to separate the several kinds of organelles for the different uh, applications when we talk about extracellular vesicles purification? I, I think uh, uh, one recommendation is um, is to use, for instance, uh, heparin, yeah? Because if you have virus, and but this will not work for all viruses, but about 70 to 80% of all enveloped viruses, yeah? So they have affinity, yeah, to the heparin. And the other ones don't have affinity to heparin. So that's, that's a, a, a quite interesting biological effect, yeah, to separate this, yeah? Or uh, you use um, uh, uh, ion exchange chromatography, yeah, and do really what I showed a linear gradient separation to 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 have a relatively high resolution, yeah, yeah. So that could be. Uh, so there will not be one single method. Will not be a single method. 
I believe more on hybrid. So in the laboratory scale, definitely you would do the preparative ultracentrifugation, yeah? And then we, we do some chromatography. Unfortunately, there are not a lot of labs around which have access to preparative and industrial uh, ultracentrifuge. So we worked hard to get one, yeah? So, so we can actually centrifuge between one and 50 liter of culture supernatant. So then you can concentrate, and this is a really good starting material. Uh, other question from Rafael Pedro Madeira da Silva Souza, uh, our PhD uh, student. Uh, his question is, considering that virus usually subvert to machinery for the formation uh, of extracellular vesicles for its own production, is it possible to infer some sim similarity of their membrane composition? Also, when purifying VLPs by chromatography, would they be eluted together with uh, extracellular vesicles or contaminated by the EV due to this possible similarity? Uh, 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 actually, uh, so what I showed you, the formation of extracellular vesicles, yeah? some of them micro vesicles and the formation of uh, exosomes and virus-like particles are uh, kind of a different process, yeah? But they are all contain the, 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 the they are enveloped yeah, by this, the, the lipid bilayer of the cell membrane. Definitely they differ in lipid composition and protein composition. But this is ongoing research where also we are involved and which is very fascinating because it's still not fully understood. Before you are not able to separate them, it's very difficult to make a protein analysis, uh, whatever, yeah? So this is also the reason why, why there is not a lot of knowledge here. But I'm pretty sure you are able with ion exchange chromatography, some affinity chromatography to separate these, uh, these uh, different particles. Yeah. Next question, uh, Professor Adalberto Pessoa Jr. Are there uh, vaccines against COVID being developed with virus-like virus-like particle? Are there good prospects for generating the vaccine this way? Yes, yes, I can say yes. That's a uh, so several companies working in this field, several companies working in the field, uh, 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 you're doing enveloped virus-like particles. We are a little bit stubborn, yeah, because we use the HIV GAC molecule to form the virus-like particle. And the health authorities are very concerned about this, yeah, because you, in, you would actually also inject an HIV protein, yeah? But it has been shown that originally this HIV uh, GAC molecule, yeah, uh, has been developed to, for an HIV vaccine. But the HIV vaccine did not work because the immune system did not recognize the GAC. So we have clinical evidence. If you in, in, in inject an HIV-1 GAC, virus-like particle, that you don't get antibodies against HIV-1. You would only get antibodies against whatever it is, uh, influenza or, 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 or the SARS-CoV-2 or whatever we do. Yeah? yeah. So because we expand our activities to other emerging viral diseases, yeah? uh, West Nile virus, and the other one is 
Usutsu virus. I don't know if you heard about this emerging virus. For Europe, a little bit a problem because uh, it is uh, transmitted by migrating birds from Africa. And with the climate change, yeah, all these the animals always go further north. Yeah. Uh, we have another question from Professor Katja Ribeiro. I would like to say that the lecture was very interesting. I want to congratulate Dr. Jung Bauer and his group for their work. And uh, I'd like to ask if more and more projects should have uh, an interdisciplinary character involving engineering, biology, and medicine, uh, among other areas. The, uh, do you think this is important? Definitely, definitely very important. I tell you why. Because uh, now we started the collaboration with the immunologists, yeah? Because they, to, to understand the Im immunology of these particles is really important for both you have to understand the immunology uh, if you want to use this virus like particle for gene therapy yeah because for gene therapy you have to bypass the immune system yeah so uh, like what is the aav the adenovirus but also our virus like particles uh, when i want to deliver the gene to the to the to the, the organ yeah uh, it should not be actually uh, uh, cleared by the immune system. It's obvious, yeah, because then it would not work. On the other hand, if I use these viruses or virus-like particles for gene therapy, I want to actually uh, 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 get them in, into the immune system. That means to the lymph nodes and then to the T cells, B cells, and all this. Uh, uh, as soon as possible, before they are cleared from the body, yeah? So you see, the understanding how these things behave, yeah, the immunology of this particle is extremely important, but this is not my expertise. This is a field by itself. But as long the immunologists do not have defined particles, so if they have a mixture of exosomes, mic microvesicles, virus-like particles or viruses, they never can say what is the effect of the exosome, what is the effect of the virus. Yeah. Uh, the question now is from Paulo Eduardo da Silva Cavalcante. Uh, the presentation was amazing. I would like to know if you think that steps in uterine ultracentrifugation could damage the virus-like particles? If yes, do you think in a better step? I, I think uh, the virus-like particles are not damaged by the, by the, the, the ultracentrifugation. I think enveloped viruses yeah, are very sensitive to what we call the air liquid interface yeah air liquid interface so the forming yeah so that's that's uh, so that's uh, the problem is when you destroy the virus like particles is if you have at the entrance or the exit of the centrifuge when you have this industrial centrifuge yeah, uh, a, a, a high flow or velocity gradient and then you know, you know, as uh, 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 from engineering, the high velocity gradient may actually um, uh, actually form or induce cavitation, and this destroys the virus-like particle, but not actually the shear force, yeah, itself, yeah. And then also in ultrafiltration, not the shear force. It's the formation of form and bubbles destroys and that the, the, the mechanical shear. Yeah. Um, we have one comment from Professor Cristiani Reis Martins. 
the head of chemical engineering uh, department. Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a comment regarding our uh, stay in Vienna uh, with uh, congratulations nah, on the opportunity uh, for always uh, be with us here at uh, UNIFES. And she's also very glad that uh, two professors from chemical engineering department stayed in uh, Jung Bauer's working group uh, with this nice uh, uh, this nice area uh, in, in this promising uh, group. Great, thank you. Now it was a pleasure. I really enjoyed your presence in Vienna. Yeah, maybe you come back for a visit. Yeah. Uh, uh, for sure. Also, Professor uh, Katia Ribeiro uh, wants to know how uh, me and uh, Yara uh, collaborate to the group uh, uh, within our staying last year. No, no, it was good. You see, we have joint publication and there will be one more joint publication and we we with the with the, purif the continuous purification of the antibody we, we we will continue it was a little bit interrupted or delayed everything due to this covid 19 pandemic yeah yeah so perfect yeah yeah uh, one, you know, one, one more publication is outstanding yeah so we have to do this yeah yeah for yeah. sure we don't want to uh, Excellent. Uh, any more questions? So so the, the last I chance is the last chance. Hello, there was Everson Miranda. Yeah, so I, I met him, I think, I don't know when, uh, at which occasion was it? Campinas. In, in Campinas, yes, yes, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, I think uh, there's another question here. Yes, uh, it's from uh, Eliezer. I'm looking for a postdoctoral position related to cancer drugs delivery and molecular sieves. Is there this kind of position in uh, Boku or uh, no, in the I institute? And also, thanks for the, your amazing lecture. Or could not, but if you look for such a position, uh, I would actually either uh, 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 check a medical university of Vienna, yeah, medical university of Vienna, or what is called the Max Perutz Laboratories in Vienna, yeah, because they are really working in this field. Yeah, and uh, I'm sure they, 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 if not now, but I know that they very often uh, 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 actually uh, uh, have open postdoc positions. Yes, um, Alois, uh, do you want to to present any uh, final considerations? Uh, then we. I think I, I, uh, uh, one one should talk, one can talk uh, 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 about everything, but not more than one hour. Yeah, so that's <laughs> no. I, I think I really enjoyed this. Uh, I really enjoyed also um, your hospitality. Yeah, so that's. Uh, for me, it's a pleasure uh, to present uh, uh, our work and it's also our honor. And actually, this is the reason why we do these things, to reach out to other universities, to, to, to other, other countries, other continents. Yeah, so that's, uh, I think, uh, that's the beauty of uh, academic life compared working in industry. Yeah, so that's, uh, also sometimes it's much harder fighting for the funding, research projects, and so on. Yeah, that's, uh. No, thank you uh, uh, for, the, for this uh, uh, kind invitation. Yeah, 
and we stay in touch. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, one last uh, comment from Professor Everson Miranda. Congratulations for the excellent talk. And uh, we also met in Guarujá last yeah. year during BPP. <laughs> during the BPP, yes. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Good. Well, uh, one more time, Alois, thank you a lot for your time today with us in this uh, international webinar series from Unifest. Uh, it was a pleasure and okay. we'll be here and also <laughs> maybe for future uh, opportunities, uh, interchanges yeah. to send some students from your lab. Yeah. Good. And don't get shown. Don't get Good. Good. Yeah. So maybe next time, uh, in Portimore at the prep conference or uh, other locations. Yeah. That's uh, let's see how, how this works out. Yeah. Yeah.